Ah, great. It's a huge pleasure to Hi, finally Damon. meet you. Hi, Damon. Nice to meet you. Wow, this is fun. A real interview with a poster and everything, just like a real EPK. Cool. Yeah. Uh -huh. It's great to see you down here at Comic-Con, Greg. Uh, what are you going to check out here? At the... Well, I'm very much uh, into the uh, fact that Punky Brewster is now on DVD. That's good. And I hear they're releasing a whole bunch of figures from the, uh, the cartoon series. So I can't wait to get my Comic-Con exclusive Glomer and Glow in the Dark Cherry. That's going to be great. And, uh, and a George Gaines. And uh, he has a replaceable head so that he can also be Commandant Lassard from Police Academy. Yeah. That's going to be fun. And I like the Wiggles. I hope they're here. They are great artists. They are very talented artists. Yeah. Do you get bothered uh, by people uh, a lot? Or are you, um, people is mostly to nice to me. I think a lot of people can't see me because I'm very short. So I uh, have to just make sure not to get trampled by Jedi. Uh, Stormtroopers, man, there's so many of them. And their armor's really heavy. So you just got to watch out whenever you see the 501st Legion coming at you. Uh, but mostly I've been getting along okay here. You know, people have been very nice to me that did recognize me. Uh, some people think I'm Bunny Rabbit from Captain Kangaroo, but whatever. An autograph's an autograph, you know. I'm not choosy. It's all right. Uh, speaking of, well, all right, first let's talk about your incredible success. Oh, well, thank you. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But you've changed a little bit over the years. To, um, now, you st when I first watched you on IFC, you seemed like a, you've got some innocence. You're, 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 but then on the on the Fox show, maybe you grew up a little. Well, on the Fox show, they wrote a lot of scripts for me, and they wanted me to be sort of older and edgy and in your face. You know, this ain't your daddy's bunny rabbit. You know, and they wanted me to be like you know, a smart wisecracker, because apparently those are the types of characters that people like. So I don't know why we got canceled. You know, I tried, you know, what you talking about, Jimmy, and catchphrases like that, and none of it caught on. But um, I went under, I, I underwent some physical changes uh, for the oh, Fox I, show. I, that, yeah. I was given a pair of glass eyeballs, and actually they felt great. I mean, suddenly I could see, I had peripheral vision for the first time in my life. They felt good, they were moist, it was wonderful. And just when I got used to them, the show got canceled and some guy from Fox repossessed my eyeballs. Took them right off my head. And I had nothing, I didn't even have buttons, I just had a couple stitches and I was knocking into everything and some kindly old nun took me in and took a button off her jacket, put one over here, and I was walking in circles. Finally I got the, the buttons back, so they're all right. But man, I tasted me some juicy eyeballs and that was pretty sweet. I also had a moving mouth on the Fox show. I don't have that no more. Oh, I noticed that. And yeah, I was so, always yeah. getting flies caught in it. And so I guess you're not opposed to cosmetic surgery. No, you know, puppets go under the thread and needle all the time. You know, Count Blas had so many face tucks. You know, it's, it's unbelievable. Are you afraid that it might come back and bite you one day the way it has with some, uh, some of the Hollywood stars that had a little bit too Well, the problem is uh, when you run out of material, you know, it's all well and good to go do facial uh, adjustments, but if they don't have the number nine brown uh, polyester cotton blend, I'm screwed. And suddenly that's how you become a patchwork. You know, that's what happened to Raggedy Ann. You know, that wasn't an intentional look. She just ran out of material. And suddenly the next thing you know, you, you look like a, an AIDS quilt. Yeah. You've been out in Hollywood for the last several years. How do you like it compared to New York City? Uh, Hollywood is very sunny, and I find that um, it's a pretty nice place to be. You know, there's a lot of nice restaurants that give you crumbs if you ask politely. And Seth Green is there, and he lets me stay in his birdhouse, which is good. Except in crow season, then it was a little rough. Talk about a sitcom, that would have been a good one. Um, but anyway, uh, New York is also a great place. It's just people are a lot meaner and a lot more less... People are a lot less tolerant of puppets in New York City, I think. There's more anti-puppetism? Yeah, they wear it on their sleeve a little more. There's more, like, puppet hatred. It's okay. It's like going down to Alabama or something. They're really not shy about letting you know what they think of you when they see you. Whereas in Hollywood, everybody's a little nicer to you because they think you might be on Sesame Street or you might work for Jim Henson. So... Uh, like so many young Hollywood st stars, you enjoyed some fast success, you shot to the top. Yep. Then that success, some of it got a little bit pulled back. So did that, uh, are you jaded by that experience? No, I'm not.
not jaded. I just wish that everyone at Fox would die. No, that's just kidding. I, you know what? I'm not jaded by it. It's just that if they could have kept me on the air, it would have been really nice because they took me off and I think it was mean because suddenly I was relying upon the money and the fame and the stardom. And the next thing you know, they don't even pay your hotel bills anymore. They just literally kick you out on the street. But, yeah, you know, I tasted the good life for a little while. And it tasted like bubble gum. <laughs> well, I loved, I loved the Fox show, but I tell you the truth, I prefer your parodies because, you know, less, less humans, less human interference uh, yeah. in your screen time. Well, it's easier on the neck because you don't have to look up. You know, Eugene Levy's a tall man. And the fact that Warren the Ape is only about an inch uh, taller than me, it's a lot easier. And, you know, you don't get quite as many uh, star egos, and you don't have to worry. It's easier to shoot and all that stuff. So I like being on cable TV. Um, they let Warren curse a lot on cable, and I don't think children should be exposed to that sort of stuff. But, eh, it's what sells DVDs, apparently. And as long as I got my name up, that's pretty cool. That is pretty cool. So, um, you're a Star Wars fan, yeah? Oh, yeah, I love Star Wars. Jar Jar is the greatest character in the history of cinema. So, okay, so you, you can tell us uh, your feelings about the prequels? You don't uh, have any... Uh... I don't see what the big deal is, you know? I, I, I think the more characters in Star Wars that can step in poop or fall down is just great. You know, I've always been a fan of the Ernest films, and frankly, I wish a CG version of uh, Jim Varney was in there. I think that was grossly missing. And I also love it when characters who fall in love just tell each other that they love each other suddenly... And then when it's time for them to be evil, they just start killing people. Because it's easy for little minds like mine to understand. You don't have to worry about plot development or, uh, or, or character or subtlety, you know? I just like, I like my wampas on screen. I like my Hans shooting first, yeah. But as Warren is quick to point out, I'm an idiot. <laughs> What's up? Uh... Well, my favorite of your parodies, I think, is the 2001, or at least it's one that of my was favorites. That was fun, yeah. What's, what's, what were some of your favorites? My favorite was Bunny Hall, where I got to play Woody Allen, because I like you're, Woody, you're Allen. Great, Woody Allen. And um, I also enjoyed, um, we're doing The Passion of the Easter Bunny right now, which is a religious epic starring me. And that, I learned a lot about the Bible and, um, and all its fairy tales. And so uh, we had a really good time working on that. I think it's important for children to understand and learn about all the fairy tales in the Bible because they all have very good messages like, you know, you're going to get punished if you're bad and you could get sores all over you and you're, at any minute you could be tested by a deity, you know, it could flood, build something to escape in. Good stuff. Good stuff. So you're not a religious bunny, huh? Uh, no, not really, but, uh, you know, some puppets are uh, somewhat religious. Some fabricated uh, Americans believe in the Church of the Arm or the Fist. Uh, some believe in, uh, you know, that there's some almighty marionette strings that just constantly make us move. Uh, I don't really think about it much, to be honest with you. I just, uh, I just thank God, for lack of a better word, that, uh, that I'm moving and talking. Because it sure feels great to be alive. Yeah. And, uh... So Dan Milano is a friend of yours? Dan Milano I've been introduced to a couple times. He's like a personal handler uh, and trainer. And whenever I'm working, he always seems nearby. He's kind of like a support system. So it's nice to have somebody who has your best interest at heart. But I never look him right in the eye. Uh, and it freaks me out because every time I try to talk to him, he's always interrupting me. Very weird. Well. Yay! Well, thanks, Greg, for your time. Is there anything you want to tell the ProBot audience uh, out there who are avid toy collectors and puppet uh, lovers? And uh, is there anything you want to say? Don't let your moms throw out any of your stuff. Um, that's probably rule number one for toy collecting. I would like to tell all the ProBot people that, uh, you know, I'm a toy collector too. I love stuff. I got a lot of stuff MIB, that's mint in box, if you didn't know and uh, MOC, Mint on Card, and I hope that if there's ever toys made of me, that you buy two, so that you can have one to open up and play with. Yeah, well, 
I, I don't like keeping my toys in the box. I always open them up. That's good. Can toys we, need to be played with. Can we expect some great toys sometime in the future? Or? Well, we're talking about getting some shirts and things done, and then I think they might make some dolls, which is going to be pretty surreal for me to look into the eyes of a stuffed me. Um, and hopefully after that we could get some action figures and stuff out, and it really depends on you guys. Let me tell you all, um, not to be shameless, but if you want to see some Greg the Bunny toys, please help us out. Please buy our DVD, tell your friends, share the, spread the word, and, and help us, uh, help us, uh, yeah, sorry. I petered out on that, Damon. If you want to help me out, you want to see some toys and some swag, please buy our DVD, tell your friends, and just, you know, support independent artists who are shooting uh, TV shows in their apartments because they really, really need your help to keep eating Chinese food and paying for gas. All right, well, thanks, Craig. Thanks a whole Thank lot. Thank you, Damon. For taking the time. Thanks. Say goodbye to all your probots. I hope you make an Alien 6 squared 7. <laughs> <laughs>